Ron Atchison for AutoForge.net. And today I've got my good friend Jason Brennan from Rupes Inn. Jason, nice to have hey, you. Hey, Ron. Uh, in an earlier video, he went through the Bigfoot 21 with me, showed me all the bells and whistles and how to properly use it. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the 15. So, so yeah. Well, um, I understood why we would use the 21 on a big panel like the hood, and now that we've moved to the fender, you're suggesting that you would use a 15 for a panel with con contours like that. And yeah, we, we can accomplish polishing with the, either machine, right? But right. we're going to get into what's the more efficient tool for what you're working on. So this part of the fender, as we've looked at, we've got a lot of concurve areas, uh, concave, convex. Um, and a little bit smaller area. So in this case, I probably would prefer uh, a 15. Whereas the 21 uses the six inch, so you can see the big Correct. difference. And so that's going to fit into the concave areas and intricate and, areas a lot better. And not only the difference in the diameter of the pad, uh, mm -hmm. the 21, that's the movement, that's the orbit. Right. So that's more mm -hmm. of a karate chop. So a lot of times when you get in these uh, curves, you got that Mr. Miyagi chopping really hard. Mm. A 15 with a little bit less orbit, it makes it a little bit easier to get into those areas. All right, great. So uh, mm. we looked at this here and identified this area actually has a lot of heavy defects. The hoods were kind of car wash swirls and so forth, but here we've got some heavier scratches. Uh, with that said, we're going to do a test spot with the blue wool, which is the uh, coarser you know, uh, product in our line, and see if we can remove some of the heavy defects. And with the Rupa system, the polished bottle lids correlate to the pad that you use, the same as the 21, so we've got a blue pad, so we'll use the yep. blue compound. Yep, match system, so blue to blue, and in DA, DA course is going to be the terminology for those products. Okay, you know what, Jason, I'm going to put a piece of tape down this fender so we can get a very good before and after. So, same thing again, we're going to prime the pad on number two for 20 seconds or so? Exactly. Good point, Ron. Uh, whether we're talking about the 15 to 21 or even in our small nano tools, the, right. the speeds and all that is going to carry over exactly the same. Okay. So, we're going to run for 10, 15, 20 seconds on speed two. And again, so what we want to do is we want to make sure that all the fibers are coated. We want every little piece of this pad to be doing work when we're actually doing an application. Okay. Uh, and because this is a test spot, let's take a look and just get a general idea of what we did here. Okay, we did get a result. We did polish it. Get the light out here and see it maybe a little better. So again, this is just a test spot, but as you can see, we did take a lot of the swirls out. Right. The heavy swirls and the heavy scratch that we're dealing with here. So that looks about where we want to go to remove some defects. So now we're going to actually okay. do a polishing process. We're going to reload the pad with two drops. Two pea sized drops, that's all we need. The one thing I'm noticing about the Rupa system is you don't use much product. So even though you, you know, you may look at the bottle and you think, well, that's not enough to do anything. You really use very little product. Yeah, less is more. Less is more. Two drops. Uh, again, you might find a little bit different depending on the heat and humidity and the climate of where you are. Uh, southern climates more humidity, usually less compound. In a northern climate, we may do two, maybe four drops, depending on what we find. Um, so we're going to go back to this, and we're going to go to speed four to actually polish. I'm going to spread the compound out and I'm going to do two to three passes. Okay. About three and a half, four.
wipe that off for you and see what we got. Looking good so far. So now whenever you're using the, the 21, or sorry, the, the 15, just like when we were using the 21, when you get to a concave area like this, if you're noticing pad stall, that's when you want to maybe bump up the speed on the machine a little bit, maybe lighten up the pressure a little bit. Yeah, so you're going to adjust your technique. Uh, that could be, well, or turn up the speed. So there's two different variables that you can do. Um, here it's going to depend on where you're standing also. So for me, I kind of want to get that edge of the pad in there. So we're going to adjust the tool to the contour of the panel. Okay. So you suggest to try and position the pad a little bit different on the panel prior to just automatically jump into higher speed. That's how I do it because I want to be consistent. Now, again, if this were a little bit deeper or maybe it was a little bit more draggy paint, then yes, I could kick it up to five, maybe six, work that area out, get back on my flat, and then reduce the speed back down. Okay. And how many panels can we get out of one pad? That's a variable that's going to depend on a lot of different factors. So some of it's going to be technique dependent. If you're a real heavy user, real heavy on it, and overuse compound, you, you may prematurely wear the pad. Um, what we recommend is cleaning your pad out about every two, three suction passes. And that's with the pad brush. So two ways. Um, there'll be either compressed air. Compressed air is the most ideal because it also cools the pad as well as cleaning. Right. Uh, if you don't have that, then yes, I'd recommend our, our pad claw tool, which has a plastic brush. Oh, and nice. clean the pad out. It fluffs it up. Now you're good to go. So, so very good point. About every two, three sections of your panel, blow the pad out before you move on. And how many pads would you, for a vehicle this size, how many pads would you recommend that a person start with? That will vary too. I like to have probably four to six pads around the vehicle. Okay. That's my personal preference. Right. Um, you can either clean on the fly or change out your pads as you go, rotate them out. So for some people who might not want to stop and blow this out and do all that, you may have another pad after you do your fender, your door, change the pad out. Uh, the other option for cleaning would be at the end of the day, take your pads off, throw them in a bucket of water, let them sit, and clean them at the end of the day. Okay. So th both of those things are going to extend your pad life. Keeping them cool and keeping them clean also will give you a better finish as you work. So the uh, up front cost may be a little bit more, but down the road you're actually going to save money by having multiple pads, rotating them through, and not... Correct. A lot of times if you were to get a phone call that my, my pad is breaking down, and what that usually means is the foam has failed, uh, that'll tend to be in the center of the pad. That's always an indication of using the pad too long and generating too much heat. So if you were to use one pad around this vehicle continuously, you probably are going to destroy that pad within one or two vehicles. Like you said, you buy more pads, you rotate them out, might be a little bit more upfront cost, but your lo your longevity of those pads right. from taking care of them is going to last you longer. Okay. Well, this looks pretty good. So uh, we had some deep scratches. The yeah, those are gone compared to what we've got going on over here. Yep. But it looks like we need to maybe refine this a little bit, get rid of some of the hazing that the compound has left in it. Correct. So we took the heavy defects and heavy scratches right. out from the more aggressive pad and the more aggressive compound. The paint, as we found out earlier on this, is a little bit soft, so it's going to be more prone to hazing and what they call micromarring. Um, it's not necessarily a hologram, as you'll see with a rotary. We are holograms very frequently used. Right. Um, in this situation here, the DA action will cause sort of like a tick mark. It gives it a little bit of a mechanical haze, but that's expected with a more aggressive product. All right. So what we're going to do is you we're going to follow up. You know what? Let me let me have a turn at this machine. You're having okay. all the fun. Sure. So we'll go ahead and we'll put our white pad on. We have our centering hole. We want to make sure we have the pad nice and centered on the backing plate. 
keeps down the vibration, makes the machine work better. And then for priming the pad, we'll do just like we did on the 21. So, so yep, so it's a new pad. Uh, I want to point out the priming is really only going to be on a brand new fresh pad or if you laundered and completely washed the pad. Uh, once that process is done, then you're only adding two drops as you go. Right, so we'll start with RX. Yep. We'll turn the machine down to number two. And we'll prime the pad. Now that we've got that, we've got some stuff all over the place. A little bit of foam dust on a new pad. Yeah. Yep, we'll, that's common. We'll put our two drops on there. We'll go ahead and kick it up to three and a half. Three passes. See what we got. Looks good. Yeah, Pure is one of my favorite products for black for finishing. Dust off of there. Big difference. We can't fix the dent. Yeah, that scratch actually is a pushed into the <laughs> yeah. to the metal there for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's a deep scratch, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, but, but we shined it very good. Yeah, it is now a shiny dent. But yeah, that looks in comparison definitely a big difference. So Jason, that looks great. Let's go ahead and. Knock out the rest of this fender because we surely can't give it back to him looking like that. I don't think he would be too happy with that. Yeah, that'll stand out. And uh, from there, we'll move on to the three inch machines on the front bumper because that's kind of a tight, intricate area. Yeah, we can move to a smaller tool. For, sure. Yep, absolutely. All right. Well, I hope you found the video informative. This is Ron Atchison for AutoForge.net. Please subscribe so you can see more videos just like this. If you'd like to learn any more information on Rupa's tools, I have a link below to all the products that we used. Thanks for watching.